Hey everybody, Final Thoughts time for Empires of the North. Although, I haven't mentioned yet the full title. This is actually Imperial Settlers, Empires of the North. This is the sequel to the insanely, hugely popular um, uh, Imperial Settlers that is just just been on a tear for a few years now. People love that game to bits, and I understand why. It is a very cool, really uh, compelling and rich engine building game with all kinds of goods conversion and whatnot. And uh, its sequel, Empires of the North, has a lot of the same core DNA, a lot of the, the same basic empire building stuff is here, but this game... <sighs> It, it, is, it is so much more freewheeling, for lack of a better term. I mean, it just starts with the fact that you're not just playing a fixed five rounds, you're racing to 25 points, which automatically gives it a very, very different feel because the game could end uh, before you have everything in play. So you really just under a lot more pressure, a lot more stress. Um, and at the same time, you're a little bit less structured in how you set stuff up. It's not, oh, I put stuff over here, over here, and this thing has to be in place to do the other thing in that. Uh, you know, you just get resources and build stuff. And um, as you watch your empire just explode in front of you with dozens of different opportunities and things that could combine with other things. I mean, at the end of the game, you'll have an engine that could co potentially combo in several different ways. Or uh, you might have an engine that's just good at one thing and you just run it like clockwork to crank up those points um, just super fast. Um, you know, one time, because uh, Jen and I, we have played this several times now, I, uh, in one turn, went from, I think, what was it, like nine points to 28 points. Just like that, uh, because I'd done everything to build up for this big, huge, super monster turn that just triggered the end of the game. And um, that is incredibly cool and powerful. It was the uh, banking faction, uh, which has this whole uh, savings resource investment thing that's really neat. Uh, and that's, that's awesome, too. All of the factions are very, very different, like the Imperial Settlers before it. Um, but... I mean, really, if people want to know, uh, you know, I, I play Imperial Settlers, I like it, why would I want to play this instead? Um, well, one, because it's going to give you new opportunities to come up with interesting combo chains and whatnot, but this game just gives you so much more freedom. Uh, you're less structured, it's uh, less confined, and um, that gives it a very, very different feel. There are certainly other differences as well, the biggest one being player interaction. Um, because these raise tokens are nowhere near as useful in this game for attacking your opponents as they were before. Uh, because now all they can do is say, oh, if I want to spend this to attack you, all I'm going to do is tap one of your buildings. Now, that could be a pretty big deal if that is the centerpiece, the linchpin of your entire engine. And by me tapping it before you get to play it, oh, you don't get to run your entire engine this round unless you come up with some other plan, and that just that could completely throw you off your game. So there could be circumstances under which it happens, but generally it is so much more useful to put these things on your ships and set sail to faraway lands to conquer and give yourself new, even more cool special combo chains and ways to upgrade and enhance your overall empire engine. So that's really great. I very much appreciate that because at the end of the day, that's what kept me and Jen from um, keeping empire, uh, you know, imperial settlers in that, you know, even though it wasn't always ever present, just the fact that there was always the possibility for strong moves coming from uh, destroying other people's stuff, that just made it a non-starter for me and Jen. I mean, in a game where one of the, one, 25% of all the factions, they're cool special power is, here's what you have to do to defend yourself from attacks, and it's different than everybody else, meant that that game didn't work for us, but we found ourselves really never in a situation where we want to attack each other, where we always have a better use for these than attacking each other, and I think that's really great, and I don't believe that was always the case for Imperial Settlers. Now, that said, I, when I'm talking about these race tokens, I will mention that's one of my few disappointments with this game. At the end of the game, having excess raise tokens are worth nothing. They are not worth points, and that seems like a real missed opportunity to me because uh, it hasn't happened yet, but I could totally foresee a circumstance where you build an engine that generates lots of these for you, but you do not have lots of opportunity to use them because you've only got two ships that can set sail every turn. And you might not even want to do that because you don't need more islands or you don't want to spend the resources to do it or whatever. And so then, if you stockpile a bunch of these and you've got nothing else to do except gum up the works, of course that's what you're going to do. And so I think you could have a situation. I mean, I've certainly been in situations where, yeah, if I play this card, what am I going to do with all these things? Because they're not worth points. Everything else in this game is worth points. Well, that's not true. Uh, people aren't worth points either, but they're the engine that drives everything. Um, 
And I really feels like these should be worth, I don't know, a set of three is worth two points at the end of the game. So that you could feel like, well, yes, I could attack you and totally mess up your engine uh, that you've got that's really working beautifully for you over there. But instead, I'll just hold on to these because they're worth points to me at the end of the game. If you have a bunch of these and you don't go sailing, you will attack each other. And so far, Jen and I, we have just gone out of our way to build engines that don't create a lot. Which is a shame. It kind of means we're self-limiting ourselves. And I just wish the game just would have acknowledged that, well, there's no reason to. These could be worth points. There's just no reason for them not to be. But that's really my only real complaint, because otherwise this game is so sharp. I've only played... Um, I I've played four of the six factions now. And they've all been interesting. And uh, yeah, and, and really unique feeling. While the core gameplay plays out the same every time. And my wife and I have absolutely endured it. I guess I, another complaint I will have is there are a lot of little things to keep track of. I mean, if you watch my run through, please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I'm sure I forgot several things. Like an easy one to forget is every time you build a new field, you immediately get the yield from that field. You don't have to wait to harvest. As soon as you build this, you get two apples or whatever it is. I totally forgot that for my entire run through because it's an easy thing to forget. It doesn't say anything about it on the card. This game so desperately wants player aids. I'm amazed it didn't come with player aids just to keep track of all those little things. Um, you know, don't forget that, that you know that are easy to forget when you're just knee deep in. I've got 20 cards here. And this particular round, which four or five am I going to activate to try and trigger some particular series of events? Um, it's uh, it's it's cool and it's fun, but I, I could, uh, the game could have used a little bit more help um, in that regard. A minor complaint. I expect people will ultimately make them on Board Game Geek, but it's just kind of an odd oversight. I love this rondel that's you know randomly generated every time you play. I mean, I, I would love to see um, more random generation with like different. Uh, tiles so you can go in instead of just the same five, but just the fact that they go into a different outlay really does impact the type of engine you're going to try to run, because getting two, or more importantly, four actions out of this thing every turn is huge, but only if you can get the right combinations of actions. So the way this thing is set up is a big game changer as well. I mean, that's just, there's so much variety here. Even if you play the same deck more than one time, there are different ways to go within these decks. And I'm, I'm just really impressed. As impressed and as well loved as Imperial Settlers is for everybody, Empires of the North is for my wife Jen and I, and this is a total keeper, and I can't, they've already announced expansions. They're going to come out later in the year that add more stuff, and that's really awesome. Considering how much love Imperial Settlers has gotten over the years, I hope Empires of the North finds just as big an audience, because this is one that definitely works for me and Jen. We really like it a lot. One more thing I'll mention, though. Because this is interesting. This is the second time I've covered an Imperial Settlers game in the last month or so, because uh, just before this came out, Imperial Settlers Roll and Write came out, which um, was an interesting little Roll and Write engine builder. And the thing I talked about there is, I was so shocked that the multiplayer game was almost like the tutorial mode and didn't really have legs, and the solo game is where the meat of Empire uh, of Imperial Settlers Roll and Ride is. So much love and attention was put into the solo player, it was obvious the designers cared more about it than the multiplayer. So much so that they've had to Act to to uh, retroactively after the game is released, say here's rules you can use to bring the uh, solo rules into multiplayer in Imperial Settlers Roll and Write. I mention all this because this is awesome. The um, the exact same, the almost the same thing has happened here. Imper uh, yo, Empires of the North, the solo game adds so much with the um, with the events, the cool special rules you have, so that you not only do you change the game based on the way this is and what your cards you get based on what clan you have, based on what islands come out, but you also change the game based on what scenario you're playing. Um, you know whether it's an extreme starvation mode or or you know there's three different ones in here, and these are so cool. And they're only for solo players. Once again, Portal. There must be somebody in Portal Games who's like, "Yes, solo play is the future," um, because it's almost like they're putting more love and attention there. Because just like after I played Roland, right, and I'm like, "Oh my god, this solo is so cool. Why didn't this work?" This is so cool, and I want. Well, I understand why some of the things that are in here wouldn't necessarily work. Surely, the um, you know the the random event system that you know you would assume would hit everybody could be an unfair thing where randomly it would hit some players harder than others, and you know so there could be some offshoots. I guess maybe that would upset the balance, maybe. But for the most part, I. It is such a bummer that we cannot find pirates. There's pirates, Dan. We've stumbled across only if you play solo. Now, 
I wouldn't be surprised if I'm not the only person to point this out once they get their hands on the game. And maybe Portal Games will um, release on their website another, here's how you can apply the solo rules to the multiplayer game. Now here, unlike the Roll and Write game, it's not necessary. This base game is wonderful. If this had never existed, there's nothing in here that would have made me say, man, I wish some of the stuff that was in here was already in the game, because this is a full, complete, rich game with lots of replay value, lots to explore, lots of fun, and you know, a really great skeleton to hang more and more content on as more expansions come out. But having seen this and having played this, I want this too for when I play with Jen. So, fingers crossed, Portal eventually decides I mean, hey, whoever's doing all that solo stuff internally, put him on your multiplayer team, because he's awesome. Or she. Uh, who knows? But anyway, that's just an odd little observation. Um, you know, and what, I mean, because I can't really find much fault with this game. Uh, you know, just this thing? They didn't have to give us this really awesome, you know, keep everything organized tray uh, that fits perfectly like a glove into the wonderful insert that comes with the game. Everything about this game is just top-notch. Um, oh, I mean, the only things I can complain about are just dumb little things like uh, everybody chooses a color, but then they get a victory point marker that doesn't match their color, instead matches the clan. So you get this weird, hey, I'm the blue player, but I've got the yellow victory point marker. There's some dumb little things like that, you know, here and there. Uh, a few typos in the rule book or whatnot, but really just minor niggles in what is overall an absolutely stellar design. And for my money, the better game. Uh, I do appreciate the more wide-ranging, freewheeling approach to engine building. You're not so restricted. Okay, well, you've only got these slots to build in, and these are the particular rules you have to follow for building. Here, it's just, okay, what have you got? What are you going to do? What's available for you? The sky's the limit. Um, just score those points as fast as possible. Uh, I am much more interested in the pressure and threat coming from other players because they might cross that 25 point um, uh, finish line before I do rather than the constant threat of oh they'll just burn my stuff to the ground because because they don't need to raise their own land love it uh, Empires of the North Imperial Settlers Empire of the North absolutely wonderful cannot wait for more content and that's the run through folks thanks so much for watching have a very nice day talk to you later so long bye bye